other. So we're going to we're going to watch a little bit of CJ Williams film here next. So when when we look at CJ Williams, this film is going to be um, a, a little bit different because there's not Huddle doesn't have one junior highlight of him. They have several games, so we're going to show you some of those games. So I'm going to have to obviously minimize it and at different times, but CJ Williams is an, a very intriguing player that brings a lot of different skills to the table. You see him blocking right here. He's a tough physical kid. You're going to see him running a couple routes here. This is against Servite in Anaheim. Um, a couple of things that I like about CJ Williams. Number one is I think he's a really tough kid. You're going to see that from his blocking, but you also see them see it from him as a receiver. He's not a burner. You know, I watched him in a track meet the other day, did really well in a four by 400 relay. And I think that's the event you'd ex I'd expect a guy like him to do well uh, because he is more of a long strider. He's not a, a quick twitch guy. He's not a guy that's a really dynamic speed guy, as you see right there. What I like about CJ is the kid knows how to play football. He's, a, he's an advanced route runner. He's a good athlete, even though he's not a dynamic athlete, but he knows how to play the game. That's a really good route there. I mean, he's getting separation against a really good program. That's a really nice route, bends it off, doesn't take it high, catches the ball clean. He's got very good hands. And for the for the comp people, this is the guy that I compare a lot to Juju Smith-Schuster. He's a little taller than Juju was. I would say he's a little bit of a stronger athlete than Juju was at the same age. I'd say maybe Juju's about a half step, uh, you know, about a half step faster than, than CJ is at the same age. Again, as a junior, we're talking about junior film. I'm still curious to see what CJ is going to do as he gets older, but uh, I'd say he is a guy that is a little bit faster. Uh, Juju, Juju was. This is against Orange Lutheran, seam route. You know, CJ's CJ's kind of the opposite. I think I might have said long strider a little bit ago. That's not what I meant. Um, he's a short strider. He's not a guy that really opens it up and runs. You can see it here, but I think that that's something that makes him an effective route runner. I think there are some parts of his game that I can that I'd like to improve upon. I see I, I really like that suddenness right there as a route runner. Guy's got good coverage, and then bam, he's able to get some separation because of how quickly he can sink his hips and get outside. That's really good. Catches the ball in traffic. He's he catches a lot of contested balls. He played well in big games this year. You know, this is him making plays after the catch where he uses his strength uh, and toughness to do some damage. He understands how to how to get open, you know, and that's that's the thing is he doesn't always get tons of separation because I think there are, there are parts of his of his game that he needs to improve upon from a route running standpoint. But he understands how to get open, and that's something I like about. And look, you have to, have to understand too, he's going against really really good competition. But C.J. Williams is not a guy you're going to look at and say he's going to come in and catch 55 balls for 950 yards or 1,000 yards and average close to 20 yards a catch. He's a guy that's going to come in and be more of a volume pass catcher. He's a guy that's going to come in and you know make a lot of plays and, and maybe average 13, 14 yards per catch is, a, is about it. This is against St. John Bosco in the state championship game. Caught two touchdowns in this game, by the way. Um, the, sh the highlights are, are, are real quick. But you know, you're going to see right here, not this catch, this is a nice, tough route. These are He's playing against D1 caliber guys. Look at that strength right there to get separation. Catches the ball high. This is that freshman quarterback that people were asking about a couple weeks ago. It's a really talented kid. But the thing about CJ that, that I really like is he's a guy that's going to be more of that volume pass catcher. He's that guy that's, you know, he may not catch. This is a great, great catch right here. This is a tremendous one-handed catch. And this isn't a big moment, right? Like doesn't have separation. It's going against a 6-1 corner, just great body control, great, really fluid hips, snaps around and just makes a tremendous, tremendous catch in a championship game against a team that's been a top five national program for years. This is another really good touchdown catch here. Really nice release. Gets a little separation at the end, but watch him track the ball. This is impressive. When talk about tracking the deep ball. He sees it, and he doesn't slow down as he works out to the ball. This is not necessarily a great throw. It's not a bad throw. He's putting it out there where only he can get it. But that's really impressive tracking the ball skills right there from C.J. Williams. Really impressed by that. And, again, this is against St. John Bosco. So this is not against some mediocre football program. This is against one of the best of the best. And, you know, when, when I project C.J. Williams to the next level, I think he's a kid that can play in the boundary. I think he's a kid that can play X. He can play to the field. I think he's a young man that is, as I said, he's not going to be a 20 yards per catch kind of guy. He's going to be a guy that 
doesn't go three for a hundred like a Xavion Bradshaw can, like a maybe a Lorenzo Styles can. He's going to go eight for a hundred, and he's that kind of guy that's going to be a, a, a weapon on third down. He's going to be a weapon in the red zone. He's going to be a guy that uh, is just you have to you have to account for him in a lot of different ways, which then makes the the Xavion Bradshaw is even more effective. If there is a way for Notre Dame. And so before we move on to the next group, if there was a way for Notre Dame to get Xavion Bradshaw, Tobias Merriweather, and C.J. Williams into this class, grand slam home run. Absolutely would love that class. I could see C.J. as the X or the W. I could see Tobias playing the opposite of that, X or W, because I think he brings some his route running ability – and Tobias's ability to, to kind of work in space and work after the catch could fit into the to the X position as well. No question. The same way that Chase Claypool fit into that position in, in 2000 and uh, in 2018 when Miles Boykin was the boundary guy. He brings some of that Chase Claypool flexibility. I think I think Tobias could play in the slot in certain situations, as we saw from him in his high school film. So I love his positional flexibility. To me, CJ brings a lot of that as well. Now, you're going to use him differently in the slot than you're going to use Xavion Bradshaw, but there's some things you can do with him from a blocking standpoint, from a working the zones and matching up against linebackers and safety standpoint. But he's an outside guy first and foremost for me. But I think he's a guy that that is going to just come in. It could be that volume pass catcher. And then Tobias can provide you with some big play pass ability. And then, of course, Xavion would be sort of that after the catch guy. And then that gives you time to develop a Morin Walker, if you're Notre Dame, who is the one receiver that is committed in the class. So to me, that would be the dream scenario if I'm Notre Dame, is to get those three kids in the class. They're my three highest-ranked receivers on the board overall. They're, they're three guys that, to me, fit perfectly together. I think CJ and Tobias bring a very unique, distinct skill set. And then, of course, Xavion is completely different than both of them. So if you tell me that Notre Dame's going to get those three guys to go with the Morin Walker – then I I'll, I'll, won't criticize this coaching staff when it comes to recruiting receivers at all. And it's going to tell me a lot about Tommy Reese, and it's going to tell me that Dell Alexander kind of got his head on straight, is now doing what he needs to do on a recruiting trail. Because that, to me, and we're going to talk about other kids because you know I don't know if I'm able to get that dream class. And so there's some other guys we're going to have to look at. But to me, uh, you know, that's where that's where I need – that's where I want to see it. That's that That would be the ideal class for me.